Hey kid, are you ready for a story that is criminally good? I'm totally ready for this! <gasps> no, storyteller, stop! What took the dinosaur we were just about to start reading? No, 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 you're wearing the mask of a robber and, 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 and I do not want you, my best friend, and you, my storyteller, to follow a life of crime. That would be the real crime. <laughs> It's okay, it's okay, dog. It's, it's, you, you don't have to be upset. Yeah, dog, this is just a story. And and besides, I think you know who we're reading about. Yeah, remember Baby Frank? Oh, this is a Baby Frank story. He's back. Yeah, yeah, gee, it's not so bad. No, no, I remember Baby Frank in the first book. Doug is referring to the first Baby Frank book called Baby's First Bank Heist. Yeah, yeah, in that one, he decided that he really wanted a pet, like really bad, but his parents wouldn't give it to him, see? Yeah, yeah, so he decided to rob a bank, which is a bad idea, but he made it okay, didn't he, Doug? Yeah, yeah, because then he decided to open a zoo and pay the money back and everything was okay. But then there was more. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then he did a jailbreak. Doug is now referring to the second book in the Baby Frank saga called Baby's First Jailbreak. Yeah, yeah, but that one, really, he wasn't being bad. No, he was saving the animals. Yeah, from a naughty baby that made the animals work way too hard. Yeah, see, so it's okay. I don't know. Come on! I mean, don't you think that maybe Baby Frank is pushing the envelope a little too far? Well... You know how I feel about these things, Doug. We have to read it, don't we? Yeah, come on, it'll be okay, it'll be awesome. Baby Frank has never let you down. Oh, that's true. And so he's telling either. Oh, that's also true. That's right. And Baby Frank, he can't help that he was born a mastermind, but he's been applying it for good, right? So it's probably gonna be okay. So, let's see, baby's first train robbery. Oh, little baby Frank is growing up. Oh, let me, um, let me just take my mask off because um, I want you to be able to identify me in a lineup, should that be necessary. Here we go. Baby's first train robbery. Okay, so we're seeing a beach scene. I mean, that's, that's not a train. That's not somewhere where you rob a train, so, so far so good. Oh, look at this, it's a beautiful train station. Oh, it's a train station. That's probably where the scene of the crime is going to occur. Have you got a pet at home? Oh, do I have pets at home? Perhaps you have a few. Baby Frank has more than that. He's made his home a zoo. Ah, look at all the different kinds of pets he has. Quack, quack, quack. And then there are the penguins and the hippos, of course, and that's the pet I need in my life. I know you're thinking, storyteller, don't you have enough with the bears and the owls and the unicorns and the giraffes and everybody? Yes, you would think, but I really, 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 really want a fox. He's woken in the morning by the parrots round his bed, squawk, squawk, and he doesn't get his breakfast till the hippos have been fed. Because the last thing you want is a hangry hippo. Together with his mom and dad, Frank works the whole day through, brushing manes and shiny hooves and clearing monkey poo. <laughs> you said poo! You said poo! Well, okay, okay, uh, okay. First of all, I wasn't expecting that that word was suddenly gonna pop up. <laughs> you should have suspected with all the animals. I should have suspected. But also, that that's not like the other word that I don't like and will not say. Poop! Yeah, yeah. That one has an extra P in it and it makes it worse. I really feel like you're splitting hairs here, but <laughs> the bottom line is I'm pretty satisfied. Hmm, at least he's satisfied. Zoo life can be tiring, but Frank thinks it's the best. Occasionally, his parents feel they'd like to have a rest. <coughs> oh, this way to the sharks. Oh, and oh, the elephant's peeking in, and oh, there's the flamingo. And the hair on this creature is looking fabulous. Oh, look at that. Do not step on that snout. Whatever you do. 
One day, after falling in a pile of yak manure, Dad said, we need a holiday. Frank was not so sure. <laughs> you did it again! You said manure! And you know what that stands for? Yes, I know what that- Poop! Poop! It stands for poop! Poopity poopity poop! Poop! Moving on. His animals all needed him. How could he go away? Grandma says she'd watch the zoo and check it was okay. Oh, grandma, that's a, I mean, this is a lot of animals for one grandma to handle. Don't you think that's a bit much? Oh, she will be a okay, I promise. <laughs> I mean, I always believe everything Abuela Bear says, but I, I hope she's not being overconfident here. We'll see. Frank didn't want to cause a fuss, yet as he drove along, he couldn't help but think of things that Grandma might get wrong. Grandma was fantastic when it came to walks and knitting, but did she have the skills required for ape and tiger sitting? Because I don't know that those skill sets are comparable exactly. Ahead, the sea came into view, where Frank's mom and dad were hoping the sun and waves and beach and rides would stop their boy from moping. You know, they call him mom and dad because this book came all the way from London, England. Yeah, this book flew, well, like in a plane probably, but I think, but it flew all the way from England to be here with you. Uh huh? It's true. And the author lives over there. And he's the one who sent us this book. That's right, this fellow right here named Jim, because he loves sharing his books with you here with us. Isn't that the coolest thing? So back to the beautiful pictures by his friend, Stephen Collins, who's also drawn the other baby books. And look at this beautiful scenery. We're by the beach and there's a lighthouse. And you can hear in the distance, the music from this fairground on the pier. And you hear the bell of the chapel tolling on the hour and the rustling at the village store and the wind rustling through the leaves and the distant hum of a tractor. Ah, uh, it is idyllic. Soon, Mom was building sand castles while Dad slept in the sun. Frank wondered, do they need me here to keep on having fun? Uh-oh, I feel like this is a dangerous thought. So when they were both occupied with sun cream application, Frank took his chance to leave a note and go find a station. A station? Where are you going? Where are you crawling, you little crawler? And where are they? What are they doing? They're applying the sunblock, which is like super important, I know. He saw a train and climbed aboard and waited to go home, but nothing seemed to happen. He was sat there all alone on seaside lines. Welcome. Uh, he crawled up to the cab to find out why it hadn't started. Then he bumped against the lever and at once the train departed. And you know who's gonna be the most shocked after Frank? These two train engineers having lunch and going, what is happening right now? Why is the train moving? And we don't see a human in there. Back on the beach, Frank's parents found his message in the sand. They ran ah! to try and stop him when they saw what he had planned. Let's see the message. Baby Frank, train back home. Oh yeah, that is pretty clear. But even though they did their best and set off at top speed, the train was still beyond their reach. Frank had too big a lead. Oh, as Frank steamed on towards his zoo, he started to relax. He smiled and waved to passerbys he saw beside the tracks. Uh, young Frank doesn't realize that these are not passerbys. These are alarmed officials. Also probably alarmed, this couple back here thinking, wait a minute, we were supposed to leave for another hour. Are we going in the right direction, Bob? I don't know, Mildred, I have no idea what's happening, but look at all the friendly people waving. Again, they're not waving, they are alarmed officials. He was looking for a whistle when he found out with a frown that he couldn't reach the lever, which would make the train slow down. Uh-oh, okay, that's rather fast. And that stop and he can't seem to reach. That's the hard part about being a kid. You can't reach that train lever just when you need it, you know? 
Meanwhile, at his zoo, it turned out Grandma, she was just fine. Together with the animals, she'd had a lovely time. I told you so. <laughs> oh, well, I was right. They were gathered in the living room and sipping cups of tea. Grandma passed the biscuits round and turned on the TV. Oh, look at this. They are having a grand old time. They're probably all gathering to watch her soap operas together, or as Abuela calls them, telenovelas. And look, there's the fox that I want. It came as quite a shock to see that Frank was on the screen. Oh my! The news said that his train was heading straight for a ravine. <gasps> Baby Seal's train on the news. No, no! Oh, what? Sss. No. And, oh no, she's thinking, no, Frank, not you, not again. Well, Grandma knew at once exactly what she had to do. She rode off to the rescue with a specially chosen crew. You've got the zebra and the monkeys and the other monkey and the penguin and the giraffe because he always helps if something is really high up there. On the train, poor Frank could see the end was getting near. He thought that going off the edge was not a great idea. Now, if I was reading this in more british English, I would have probably rhymed that better because, let me demonstrate. On the train, poor Frank could see the end was getting near. He thought that going off the edge was not a great idea. See, near, idea. They would have rhymed if I was British. Then, up ahead, upon a bridge, he saw his grandma stand ba -ba 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 -ba, and dangle down a pair of snakes she held in either hand. Oh, look at grandma go! She is a total boss right now! Even the animals are like, whoa, respect! She brought some monkeys with her and they clambered down the snakes. Grandma bellowed, lift Frank up so he can reach the brakes. Frank grabbed the lever with both hands and pulled with all his baby might. The wheel beneath him lurched and screeched. He screwed his eyes shut tight. Oh, what if we didn't make it? I gotta look. He waited for the crash to come, but heard his gran instead. That's quite enough excitement. Let's get you home to bed. <gasps> oh, 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 oh! This is gonna be the top story on the news. And the police are there, and all the paparazzi, and there's the monkey, and they're, they're holding on and creating like a bridge for Frank to crawl across, and there's grandma waiting, and there's a couple saying, Wow, Bob, I didn't know that there was like a show with this train. And he's like, Mildred, I don't think this is an official show. Mom and dad weren't far behind. They hugged Frank with relief. <gasps> and promised that from now on, they would watch their baby thief. So life returned to normal, normal. Though some little things had changed. All the trains were baby proofed. Their levers rearranged. <gasps> no operators below this line. Oh, so they, no infants. <laughs> I have a funny feeling that a little sign or two would not stop our baby. What do you think? No, right? And these days, Frank is happy when he has to leave his zoo because when he goes on holiday, the animals come too, because why not? Everyone loves a seaside vacation, right? Can I just go backwards one page because I just wanted to take this in a little bit more. There's the mom and dad and there's the snakes, heroes. And the alligator, although it may be a crocodile, I always have trouble telling those two apart. And there's that one kind of monkey and then the other kind of monkeys and the penguins wearing a hat because you know the white parts will burn otherwise. And we got the, the best ride, the best view, and then the elephant and it's gonna be a beautiful day on the beach. And thankfully, no babies were harmed in the making of this book. Oh, a storyteller, how can you ever doubt an abuela? Yeah, storyteller, how could you ever doubt an abuela? Well, I didn't doubt her. I just, I didn't 
want her to be in danger. Is that so wrong that I would worry a little bit about you? <laughs> it's how she shows me that she loves me. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, sometimes that's how we show love. We worry. And speaking of worrying, oh, 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 everything turned out okay, Green Bear. I told you, Baby Frank would be awesome. I mean, I do not advise you to ever, like, jump on a train and drive it back home all by yourself. No, you probably shouldn't do that. Oh, we should have probably put a legal disclaimer. Can we put a legal disclaimer on the video, my off-screen technical genius guy? Oh, that was quick. Cool. See, now it says that legally you are not permitted to take a train to go home for animal visits or any other purpose without explicit permission uh, in writing from your parents. Do you feel better now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody knows not to do this. And, and, and I'm guessing that baby Frank will not do this again. No, I think baby Frank will come up with something new. Oh, no. Oh no, that worries me. I don't like that thinking. Well, I mean, that's the very nature of being a mastermind. Your mind never stops mastering. That's, that's what I meant to say. Well, kid, I hope that you loved the Baby Frank saga. And if you happen to miss the first two stories, uh, even though we sort of get, caught you up on what happened, I'm going to put the links down below so that you can watch all of them and experience the whole drama that it is to be Baby Frank, criminal mastermind. Yeah.